Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and we have a lot of really good questions from inside the Red Raider subscribers, so I'm going to dive right into these. First one comes from Tech Freak, who says, Does Tech host a baseball regional now? And that's um, basically when he says now, he means after Texas Tech swept Oklahoma State in Stillwater. And uh, going into the weekend series against Oklahoma in Lubbock, the Red Raiders uh, controlled their own destiny. Now, the series began actually Thursday night uh, against Oklahoma. But uh, So by the time you see this, uh, they will have played a game, and we might know a little bit more in terms of where Texas Tech stands to answer this question. But we had Keith Patrick from Red Raider Dugout. He does a great job there. Red Raider, Red Raider Dugout does an excellent job of covering Texas Tech baseball. We had them on the Rock and Pregame or we had him on the Rock and Pregame last week. We have him a lot, uh, most weeks now, uh, since we're in this this time of the year, this time of the season with, with college baseball. But uh, he really knows the stuff. And what he said made a lot of sense to me when I asked him. I said, what does Tech have to do against Oklahoma if they beat Oklahoma State or if they sweep or, or win the series? And he just basically said, look, I don't think they'll host a regional unless they actually win the Big 12 regular season uh, title outright. He says they have a really good chance of hosting a regional in that case. Now, that was before the sweep of Oklahoma State, so things have changed now. That has become a, a reality, uh, at least an opportunity. Of course, if Texas Tech dropped the game Thursday night against Oklahoma, then that changes things a little bit. They'd have to win the last two to share the title with TCU, and then I don't know how it shakes out after that. But So to answer you, if Texas Tech's able to pull off the sweep, Yes, I think they'll host a regional. If they just win the series against Oklahoma and tie with TCU, maybe. Uh, if they lose the series, then no. They'll be a, a two seed. Um, I've seen some projections as uh, Tech going out to Miami to Coral Gables uh, for that regional, which, um, speaking of Keith Patrick and River Dugout, we were talking about that last week, that that would be interesting just because that kind of started off the whole, the whole thing in terms of going to the College World Series under Tim Tadlock. Um, they were a two or three seed out there for that regional, won it, and then ended up uh, going to the College World Series So after winning the Super Regional. So, I mean, that's not the worst fate to have to go to, to get to go to Miami uh, to, to play some baseball. But, uh, yeah, of course, Texas Tech would rather have the regional home. Anonymous asks, he says, when do football signees from the 2022 class arrive on campus to begin workouts? Yeah, that's a good question. At the end of this month, uh, summer one is when, uh, or starts June 1st, actually, exactly on June 1st. You look it up on text calendar, academic calendar. Uh, so they move in the weekend before that. Um, so, you know, not long now. They're going to be moving in and getting going and then uh, summer workouts and then uh, fall camp and then the season. Just wham, bam, it'll be here in no time. Right now it's like uh, kind of the slow time. There's some recruiting coming up in June with some official visits that will be exciting. But uh other than that, I mean, this is as slow as it gets covering college sports nowadays. Uh, but, you know, June will be some official visits, uh, some big visitors in town uh, from the 2023 class. And then uh, July, you'll have the Big 12 Media Day and all that local media day. And then August is fall camp. And then, bam, start the season and we're off again. So, um, but yeah, to answer your question, those guys get in at the end of, the, end of May. OBX Raider asks, he says, with spring ball over, are we hearing anything about uh, any possible transfers coming in? Well, I know they kicked the tires on some guys. There was an Alabama defensive line, uh, defensive lineman who, who visited. I don't know, within the last couple weeks, they've looked at some offensive linemen. So they're still looking to possibly add in the trenches, just add depth, see if they can find a playmaker or a, a guy who can uh, – a veteran they can plug in they know can play. You know, that's what they're looking for. Um, the scholarship limits – uh, have been changed. There's a new rule where to kind of help some of these programs uh, catch up, as long as they're not over the 85 scholarship limit, they can oversign some of these classes. So um be interesting to see how Joey McGuire and, and the coaching staff take advantage of that. I think that'll probably be more with the 2023 class, but uh, still uh, I'll be interested to see if they add any more veterans. Because, you know, I think we've seen even before McGuire was here with Coach Wells that they added one or two veterans like late, like even in the summer or like a couple of times like in fall camp. Like a guy came in and then he was basically plugged in and, and played. Um, so, uh, yes, to answer your question, I do think they – well, they are. They're looking for a couple – one or two more guys, and it's, a, it's in the trenches. All right, Texan44 has a question about – 
Texas Tech football. He says uh, two groups who are making either – give me one group that – makes a sharp improvement, a big improvement over last year, and one position group that uh, may decline from last year. Yeah, I, I think the defensive backfield is going to be better. I think with the coaching staff, the scheme, Tim DeRuiter, um, just some of the guys they brought in, some veteran coaches. And then I really like the safeties. I think the safety play, if they can stay healthy, of course, um, will be one of the strengths of the team, period. Uh, definitely on the defense with uh, Rabbit, Taylor, uh, Dadrian, Taylor, Demerson, who was one of your kind of quietly maybe uh, was one of your better players on the whole team last year, matched up with Reggie Pearson, who went healthy, was very good. He had a really good bowl game. Uh, he'll lay a lick on you, but also he can help in coverage. I like those two guys as like your your deep safeties. And then Marquise Waters, who got hurt, the veteran guy who transferred in from Duke, Played well in the first three games. Had a, had a pick six, I think, in the second game. Uh, second or third game. and But then got hurt and missed most of the season. But he's back. He's going to play a hybrid linebacker safety spot. So I really think that's going to be good. I think you have some corners uh, that I like. Both some returning veterans and some younger guys. So I think the defensive backfield, while I, I'm not saying it's going to be excellent, I think it's going to be pretty good, which is quite an improvement over recent seasons. Uh, in terms of decline, uh, you know, maybe linebacker. I mean, you can't lose so many guys that, that played so many snaps for you and did a good job. Uh, you know, the Collins schoolers, the Rico Jeffers. Um, man, I know I'm leaving some people out. Um, there's three or four guys that you're losing from last year who played a lot. So I do like uh, Demetri Moore who's coming in. Christian Merriweather staying is good. You have some pretty Dang good players, nice potential at outside linebacker. Robert Wooden, who had to sit out last year after transferring for, uh, from Virginia Tech. Um, Josiah, Josiah Pierre is at outside linebacker spot. Um, and Tyree Wilson's even been, has been listed at, at that outside linebacker, kind of rush, uh, stand-up rush position, outside linebacker. So you have some. Uh, LB Moore, another guy to watch. Ah, you have talent. You have guys you know have the potential to get it done um, at outside linebacker. It's just doing it. Um, and then Demetri Moore, former uh, all-freshman SEC performer at Vanderbilt, who transferred around, was at uh, Missouri State, I believe, before, um, and used to play for Coach McGuire at Cedar Hill. I remember interviewing him and covering him in high school, saw him, and got, the guy is a monster, great potential. So, yeah, I, while you're losing a lot, yeah, I think it might dip a little bit, uh, it's there's still some potential there, and then receiver kind of same thing. I like the potential, the size, all that. I think uh, Miles Price is poised for a very good year, but when you lose a guy like Eric Azucama, there's a couple of veterans, other veterans they lost. Um, it might take a dip, but then again, statistically with Zach Kidley coming in, it probably won't look that way. So, um, I, I mean, really to me, uh, I don't. I hate to sound like a broken record is offensive line, you know, and I don't know if it's going to be declined because it wasn't great from last year. But uh, that's where the big question, the biggest question mark is for me right now. So offensive lineman, uh, offensive line coach, and former uh, great Texas Tech center Stephen Hamby has his hands full. He knows that. He said that. Joey McGuire's mentioned it. So uh, they're gonna have to. They have numbers, but they're gonna have some have to have some guys step up, specifically at center and on the right side of, of that line, um, if Texas Tech really wants to uh, make some noise next year. J. Luke Raid wants to know when does T Texas Tech basketball receive his next commit and who will it be? I guess I'm gonna have to go with Elijah Fisher. You know Austin Massey, uh, who does a great job for us on inside the River Raiders. I'm, you know I'm sure you know J. Luke J. Luke Raid. You've probably been in that transfer portal thread that's like 200 something pages now. Um, just great info on a daily basis from Austin there. Uh, but he put in a crystal ball for Elijah Fisher, the five-star shooting guard who is expected to reclassify from 2023 to the 2022 class. Uh, you know, 6'5 guard out of Toronto, athletic. I mean, I think he's ranked as the number 20 overall player in the country for the 2023 class. So that would be really nice. Whether he starts at the two guard or if he comes off the bench as a six man, I think Fisher uh, will really help you in terms of adding firepower to this roster. So just overall talent, athleticism. So uh, I'm going to have to go with Fisher as, as the next commitment, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's a transfer portal guy. Texas Tech is in on so many guys. They've lost out on a couple of guys here recently, but they are uh, been, been aggressive and have reached out to so many guys. And, again, 
look in the transfer portal for all the details from Austin Massey, but it wouldn't surprise me if they move on after missing out on a couple of guys and went ahead and signed some transfer portal guy. But I'm going to play the odds. Crystal Ball is in for Fisher. We've been hearing about it for a long time. I'm going to say Elijah Fisher. And when? Uh, in the next week or so? Don't hold me to that, though, because uh, there's no I, I don't know what the red tape might be right now or what's holding it up exactly, what's going on uh, for Fisher or on Texan uh, from keeping the announcement from being made. All right, Syntex Red Raider wants to know, when the four new teams are added to the Big 12, uh, where, who do I think Tech will struggle against uh, and why? Well, I'm going to stick to the two main sports, football and basketball. And I'll say in football, I mean, just to me, common, say, common sense says BYU, especially there, out there in Utah. And then uh, uh, Cincinnati, who, I mean, they were just in the playoffs. Um, good program. I know they lost a lot of guys um, who made that run possible, but you know they, they have a good program going right now. And I have to, without looking at, it, I have to assume that the recruiting is probably doing better since they're all, they are moving to a Power Five program. So those two, I think, right now, like I mean, I can't say Houston because, and you know, Tech might lose to them in their non-conference matchup this upcoming season. But I think Tech's won the last five matchups and by a pretty considerable margin in most cases. So. Uh, I can't say Houston in, in football, but I will say in basketball, I mean, obviously Houston, I think they just went to the Elite Eight. They've been in the Final Four the year before. Kelvin Sampson's a great coach. Um, last time they played, Houston put a pretty good whipping on, on, a, on a good Texas Tech team. So, yeah, I would say Cincinnati and BYU in football and Houston in basketball would give Tech the biggest problems uh, right now. All right, 78 Tech uh, says... What is Joey McGuire's take on committed recruits going to visit other uh, schools? So guys who have committed to Texas Tech, you know, they, they say they want to be a Red Raider, uh, but then still go take visits to other schools. He said, you know, Calvin Simpson Hunt is a good example. And if you don't know who he is, four-star cornerback, you know, when Texas Tech picked up a commitment from him, you know, he Tech was their, his first offer. He visited, he committed. And I, like, I had to make the profile for him, the 24-7 sports profile for him. It wasn't that long ago. I think it was like November or something. Um, and, you know, now, I mean, he has offers from Alabama and Oklahoma and USC and Notre Dame and LSU and Florida. I mean, he's just blowing up. I mean, just judged by the judging by the offer list, he'll probably be a five-star recruit before it's all said and done. And he is taking visits. I know he visited LSU. I think he's visiting uh, – I mean, he's probably going to visit Alabama. And uh, – uh, Notre Dame, perhaps, and then USC just got in the mix. So, I mean, and what is Joey McGuire's stance? I've heard from recruits they've said, you know, it's not one of those where it's like, well, you better not visit other places. And, you know, like Oklahoma State's done that a couple of times. Like Miles Price is a guy who's committed to Oklahoma State. He visited Tech, and they pulled the offer from him, which was, hey, that's Tech's gain, Oklahoma State's loss. I know they they still have good receivers and all that, but that was, I mean, I think Miles Price is going to be one of the better players for Tech next year. Uh, but no, Joe McGuire, I would say, has probably like the opposite type of philosophy in that. Like, hey, you go take your visits. You know, I want you to be sure you want to come to Texas Tech. And oh, by the way, no coach is going to love you up and, or coach you harder than I am. You know, so he still makes his pitch. He's still like confident about it, but he's like, hey, you know, go through the process. Make sure you know that you want to be here. So I've heard multiple recruits tell me that, and I've heard, let's just say, resources close to the program. That's that's his philosophy. Um, so, in which I like, because I mean, you can't recruit scared, right? Those, those kids think about when you, and then kids, you know, like, what do they value? Um, especially like young athletes, young, like dudes, you know, somebody who's real with them, who's, who's going to be honest with them, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, whatever the lingo is nowadays, um, just being honest and being true. And, and if you're not, these kids can, and most people, to be honest, especially like West Texas, they'll, they'll smell it on you a mile away. So. McGuire is um, open and honest in terms of like, hey, you know, go see what else is out there, but, but you know, let us know what's up and, and, and make sure you want to be a Red Raider because that's who we want here. So I love it. And uh, I'm, obviously it's working. They may, they're going to lose some of these highly rated guys. That's just part of it. Notre Dame or Alabama have guys decommit. I mean, that's just part of recruiting. Um, so we'll have to see, but with, with Calvin Simpson Hunt, Specifically, but I don't. I, overall, I think it's a very um, smart philosophy. It's the right philosophy to have with these guys because I, I agree. You want guys who want to be here. So, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the mailbag. With that, I want to thank you for all the questions. Thank you for watching, and until next time.